So today we're going to be installing a Tigo rapid shutdown transmitter and we're going to be installing it inside of the 6000 XP. And we're also going to be wiring up one of the contacts on this emergency stop to the 6000 XP as well. So before we get started, I just want to say a little disclaimer. This is not intended to be a how-to video or a tutorial. This is just a video on how I'm going to do it. So this here is the Tigo rapid shutdown transmitter and it transmits a signal out to the shutdown modules that we have installed on our solar panels and it tells them that it's okay to turn on. It, once this signal stops, the solar panels will actually shut down and be a safe voltage. So how does this transmitter send a signal out to the modules on the solar panels? Well, it does it through the solar panel wiring and you have to run one of the solar panel wires through this core. And it, what it does is this induces a signal onto your wiring and that's how it communicates out to the module out on your solar panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and install the Tigo rapid shutdown transmitter inside of the 6000 XP and then we are going to go ahead and wire it to the signal core and we're gonna mount this inside of the 6000 XP as well. So when you look in the 6000 XP over here on the communication side, so your connections are up here but then there's this big void back here behind it and that's where we're gonna put the Tigo shutdown transmitter. So the transmitter will mount to a piece of DIN rail. So I cut this one, I think it's about two and a quarter inches long. And we're just gonna go ahead and mount it to the back of the inverter using some self-tapping screws. So now when we look inside of here, you can see below the communication board, you see that little piece of DIN rail. So on the Tigo transmitter, it can actually wire up to two different signal cores. We're just going to be wiring up one. You can see on the terminals, there's a the white and black terminal. And then on the core, there's a white and black wire. You just got to match those up. And on the other side of the transmitter, I'm going to wire up a couple wires to the 12 volt power. And there it is. Well, I've changed my mind. I thought I was going to mount the transmitter core inside of here, but it is fairly tight. So I think I'm going to take this core and mount it down here inside of the conduit box. So I'm going to take one of these like little adhesive zip tie mounts and I'm going to put that onto the back of the conduit box and then I'm going to put a screw through it to hold it in place because these stickers never seem to last. And then I'm going to zip tie the core to this mount so that it's held in place at the back of the conduit box. So as we look inside the wiring trough, back here in this corner, that is the, the transmitter core right here. So now all I gotta do is disconnect my, I'm gonna disconnect my negative solar panel wires, run them through the center of that core, and then back up to the inverter. And you can see my solar panel wiring, I've got an extra loop here, so I've got plenty of wire to be able to reroute that. All right, I got it wired up. You can see both negative wires are going through the center of the core. And then they come up and land on the PV inputs just like normal. So now that I've got the shutdown transmitter all installed, I'm gonna go ahead and power everything up, make sure that I got solar panels coming in because if this is if this is incorrect and it doesn't work, then we won't get any solar input. So the solar panels are working. It says I've got 300 and about 70 volts coming in and, and about 500 watts coming in. It's a pretty cloudy day. It's been raining all day. So the last thing to do is to hook up the emergency stop to the 6000 XP. And if you look at the manual, I, I don't think that they have worded this correctly. It says, the external switch must have a normally closed contact type for the emergency shutdown. Well, I have no switch wired to this right now. It is not a closed contact. It is open. It's an open circuit right now, and it is functioning normally. Now, if I wire across that and close the switch, it will shut down. So I think the statement's wrong on here. It's actually a normally open switch and when you press it, it closes and causes the shutdown. The good thing is, is most of the emergency stops that you buy will have both sets of contacts. It'll have a normally open and a normally closed, so you have whatever one you need. So I'm gonna go ahead and just wire this e-stop up to the system 
so I can demonstrate what actually happens. So besides turning off the voltage to the solar panels, this has the total shutdown. It'll actually shut down everything. It'll even trip the breaker on the battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the e-stop. The inverter will stop outputting power. The battery's gonna turn off and the solar panel voltage is gonna drop. That was the battery breaker clicking right there. It just turned off. It now has an alarm on the battery. So as soon as I hit the e-stop button, you can see the output voltage turned off. Now the inverter stayed on. It'll stay on for, I don't know, it's like 10 seconds maybe, 15 seconds before it completely powers down. Now if it has grid power, it will actually stay powered up, but it just won't be outputting any power. So now when I reset this emergency stop, nothing is gonna come on automatically. You actually have to reboot everything to get it to come back on. And it's the same with the battery. You have to reboot this to get it to recover. You can see it tripped its own breaker. If I try to reset this, it'll automatically trip again. You can't reset the breaker until you reboot the battery. So I gotta turn it off and then turn it back on. Let it boot up. And now it should let me reset the battery and it's on. So now that I've rebooted the battery, you can see that the inverter has powered back up and everything's starting to operate exactly the way it should. Well, I'm gonna do it one more time just so I can show you the solar panel voltage and how it drops off. So you can see we're around 360 volts. I'm gonna hit the e-stop. Okay, jumped to open circuit voltage, 430 volts. And now finally it completely shuts down. All the panels modules are shutting down. You see that voltage dropping. The inverter just shut off. The voltage keeps dropping and there we go. We're at the bottom, four volts. It's pretty safe voltage. All right, we're all reset and powered back up. So rapid shutdown works the way it should, at least from in here. I gotta go wire it up to the button over on the workshop. But uh, yeah, total rapid shutdown, inverter, batteries, and solar panels. So let me just go finish wiring this up and then we'll give it one more test from the workshop. So the manual, I don't think it states what size wire to use for like the rapid shutdown switch or anything, but this terminal block, like 16 gauge wire, that's probably about the biggest wire you're gonna fit in these connections. I bought 14 gauge wire and it's very tight. So one last look in here. So the last two terminals, that's your 12 volt power to power up the Tigo transmitter. And then the next two terminals, this is to hook up to your e-stop switch and a blue and white wire, they go over to the workshop. So I just checked with Rebecca, make sure she wasn't doing any laundry or dishes or cooking or anything. Because when I hit this e-stop, it's actually going to kill both of my systems. So I've got the EP cube on one contact. I've got the 6000 XP on the other set of contacts. There's two contacts in here. So when I hit this, I'm going to lose power to everything. So here it goes. I can hear the air conditioner running. Boom, there went the air conditioner. Well, it's obvious that worked because all of the fans and lights and everything's turned off here in the house. So let's go ahead and reset it. So most of these buttons you have to twist a certain direction to pop them out. There we go. So there's one more piece to this rapid shutdown system that we didn't look at, and that's what's on the solar panel. So on each solar panel, there's one of these shutdown modules, and it connects to each panel, and it turns the panels on if it sees a signal from the transmitter. If it doesn't see that signal, the panels are always at a safe working voltage. And I've got these transmitters mounted on all the solar panels on my roof. So if your solar panels are ground mounted, you don't have to worry about a rapid shutdown system. They're only required on systems that are mounted on a building. And that's strictly for first responders so that firefighters can come here and not worry about getting electrocuted while they're fighting a fire. So like I said, this video is not a tutorial on how to do it. It's more of like how I'm doing it. Uh, would EG4 recommend putting the Tigo transmitter inside of the inverter? Probably not, but uh, it fits. There's plenty of room for it, and it worked. So that's what I ended up doing. So I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.